everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles, and this is the dethroning of Nancy Pelosi. Uh, I started with Drudge this morning, and I read this article, this link here, to centrist Dems urge Pelosi to break stalemate. I don't know, my internet's doing weird things, so who knows if I'm going to make it through this or not. Okay, so I go to that article, and Congress agitates to end relentless shutdown. The Senate is prepping dual votes while House centrists are pushing Pelosi to counter Trump with her own compromise proposal. This is the key right here, centrists. You see, the Democrats have a group of centrists in there who are none too happy about this going on. And for those of you who are saying all of this shutdown is for the riffing, the reduction in force, I'm telling you, that's not it. Okay? This is what it's about. It's about dethroning Nancy Pelosi. What Trump is trying to do is get the Democrat Party, those centrists who cannot take such a strong negative view against this wall, or their constituents are not going to reelect them. Because we used to have one here, Joe Donnelly, and he was a senator, but he used to be in the House. The thing was, he was a centrist. He had to walk that line. A lot of times he voted with Republicans. Sometimes he voted with Democrats. It went back and forth, and you never knew what the guy was going to do, which is one reason why he just got ousted from the Senate, because he started voting almost always with the Democrats, and he took the stance with the Democrats on Kavanaugh. He should not have done that. You know, he always ran on being a strong Catholic and pro-life and everything. And there's just no room in the Democrat Party anymore for those. And this is what's happening. Those people that are centrists are having a difficult time surviving with this situation. And what Trump is trying to do, I am pretty sure of this, he is setting all this up so these people are going to be forced to make a choice. Are they going to stand up and have a spine against Nancy Pelosi, or are they going to cave? And then they're going to lose their seats, because the people that elected them elected a centrist. And if they're going to go full blast liberal, those people are not going to reelect them. They're just not. We did not reelect Joe Donnelly because he was no longer a centrist. So he totally lost out. And to be honest, I was very surprised that he lost, but I'm so glad he did because now we have a strong Republican in there who is going to vote with Trump. And so I'm not worried about that anymore. But there are still Democrats out there who are centrists. And those centrists are going to have to choose which side they're on. And that's what Trump is trying to force. Now, I understand a lot of people are saying, but, oh, he wants to reduce the government, and this is a perfect opportunity. Well, first of all, I've tried telling you the document out there on the Office of Management and Budget website says that, no, you cannot riff them because of a government shutdown. They can be riffed if, there are other circumstances, the other type of furlough, where they've been kind of laid off for a little while. Those people can be riffed. So no, they really cannot riff these people. Secondly, I'm telling you, it's not good for optics. This is why I said it's not appropriate. It's not appropriate because right now, Trump does not want to be seen as firing a bunch of people from their jobs. That's the last thing he can afford to do. He doesn't want to do that right now. He's not going to do it because he's too smart. That cannot happen. I know some of you hate the idea of optics, but I'm telling you, that's what has to happen. There are still far too many people who believe the mainstream media, and they're falling for it, hook, line, and sinker. They have no other idea that what they're hearing is a pack of lies. I encounter them all the time, and I don't have a whole lot of friends who are liberals, but everyone that I know is saying, well, yeah, see, this is true. I had one of them send me a thing, a, a link the other day and expect me to go, oh, no, the sky is falling. And it's like, uh, no, that actually is working into what's going to happen. It's part of Trump's plan. They didn't get it because they don't have any idea. A lot of them have no idea who Peter Strzok is or Lisa Page or half of these people. They probably don't even know who Andrew McCabe is. So 
It's something that we're dealing with a huge lack of knowledge and a massive false narrative that has been told so many times these people believe it. And this is almost half of America. That's why it's so serious and we can't just ignore optics. It has to be done correctly. So this is something that we're watching right now. This is optics because what Trump is doing is he's getting them to show who they really are and where their real priorities are. They don't care about the centrist ideas that they once had. And that used to be the majority of the Democrat Party when I was growing up. But oh no, they are so far left right now that this needs to be shown because there are a lot of Democrats who are walking away. You've heard of the walk away movement. Well, that's why because they are moving away from that centrist position and the majority of Democrats who were part of that aren't buying into this liberal stuff. And that's what Trump needs to have happen. He needs to have them rebel against their little dictator, Nancy Pelosi, because that's what she set herself up as. She believes that she is equal in power to Trump. And I was listening to Rush today. He said the same thing. He said that she thinks she is, but she doesn't understand that here she is only one half of one of the branches. So she is not as powerful as she thinks she is. If all these centrists get together, it could be really eye-opening for the people because they're not happy with this. They're being put in a really bad position. And then, of course, you know what happened today, that there have been letters exchanged. Pelosi and Trump trade taunts over so to the State of the Union address. And Trump said he'd show up in Congress Tuesday to give a speech. Not happening, responded Pelosi. And so I'll put this link down below. It's Politico, though. So, of course, you know, it's taking Nancy Pelosi's side. And then this one, CNBC, showdown. Trump pledges alternative event after a Pelosi block State of the Union. So, will they do it? Well, we're going to find out. Maybe Greg Gutfeld will get his wish and not have to go to Washington. Maybe Trump will just do a regular rally type event. Hey, I'd go. I'd go in a heartbeat. Here's a letter from Trump, and it says the Honorable Nancy Pelosi. Dear Madam Speaker, thank you for your letter of January 3rd, sent to me long after the shutdown began, inviting me to address the nation on January 29th as to the State of the Union. So right there he's putting a jab at her because he's saying, hello, if you really are doing this because of the shutdown, so why did you send me the invitation letter with, after the shutdown had started? So he's calling her out right there. I'm telling you, this is a power play. This is all a power play. It is the President of the United States fighting against this little dictator who has set herself up and is trying to control our entire country and our entire government because right now she's in the driver's seat. But wait until these centrists start turning because that is what Trump's trying to do. He's trying to break her hold by getting the others in the Democrat Party to stand up to her insanity. So let's go on. As you know, I had already accepted your kind invitation. However, I then received another letter from you dated January 16th, wherein you expressed concerns regarding security during the State of the Union address due to the shutdown. Even prior to asking, I was contacted by the Department of Homeland Security and the United States Secret Service to explain there would be absolutely no problem regarding security with respect to the event. They have since confirmed this publicly. Accordingly, there are no security concerns regarding the State of the Union address. <laughs> See, he's calling her out. He's, he's calling her a liar is what he's doing. He's saying, hello, here are the facts. <laughs> You're not dealing with reality, Nancy. Therefore, I will be honoring your invitation and fulfilling my constitutional duty, which, by the way, that is in the Constitution that the president is supposed to give some kind of State of the Union to Congress every year, but it doesn't specify how it's supposed to be done because, of course, there was no TV back then, so they couldn't do it that way. And fulfilling my constitutional duty to deliver important information to the people and Congress of the United States of America regarding the state of our union. 
I look forward to seeing you on the evening on January 29th in the Chamber of the House of Representatives. It would be so very sad for our country if the State of the Union were not delivered on time, on schedule, and very importantly, on location. <laughs> so he signs it. Well, of course, she sent him one back. <laughs> Here's what she sent. Dear Mr. President, on January 3rd, it was my privilege as Speaker to invite you to deliver the State of the Union Address on January 29th. The Constitution calls for the President to, quote, from time to time, give to Congress information of the State of the Union, unquote. During the 19th century and up until the presidency of Woodrow Wilson, these annual State of the Union messages were delivered to Congress in writing. And since the start of modern budgeting in fiscal year 77, a State of the Union address has never been delivered during a government shutdown. In September 2018, Secretary Nielsen designated State of the Union addresses as National Special Security Events, NSSEs, recognizing the need for the full resources of the federal government to be brought to bear to ensure the security of these events. The extraordinary demands presented by NSSEs require weeks of detailed planning with dozens of agencies working together to prepare for the safety of all participants. The U.S. Secret Service was designated as the lead federal agency responsible for coordinating, planning, exercising, and implementing security for national security events by Public Law 106-544, December 19, 2000. However, both the U.S. Secret Service and the Department of Homeland Security have not been funded for 26 days now, with critical departments hamstrung by furloughs. Sadly, given the security concerns and unless government reopens this week, I suggest that we work together to determine another suitable date after government has reopened for this address or for you to consider delivering your State of the Union address in writing to the Congress on January 29th. I mean, she is just going after him. If you can't see this as a power play, you're just blind because that is obviously what's going on here. We have a congresswoman who thinks she's more important than the president of the United States. And that simply is just not it. And I hope this comes back to bite her in the butt. I think that's what's going to happen. By the way, that letter was sent out by Sarah Sanders on her Twitter feed, so you can find it there. Very interesting to find out, and we're going to see how this is all going to work out. But I did want you to understand that when we're talking about the riffing thing, and I know there have been a lot of people saying, well, it says after 30 days. No, go back and read it again, because it really does not say that you can have massive riffing after 30 days. There might be a few people that you'd be able to let go, like contractors and things like that, but no, you really can't. There might be after 120 days, that's a possibility because it was a little more nebulous in some of the wording that it used there. So I'm not sure on that. And I'm not disputing at all that Trump is planning on riffing hundreds, thousands of people that work in our government eventually. It's just not going to be appropriate right now because of optics. He can't do it. That would be so bad for him to look like he's just put a whole big bunch of people out of work. That really is not going to help us get that wall. And the whole point of the wall really is not so much the wall. I mean, it is. That's important. But we all know Trump can do that right now if he wants to. He can stop all this garbage at any time and he could declare a national emergency and he can do it that way. The people of the United States need to see these Democrats for who they are and that they don't care really about the people that are out of work right now because of the government shutdown. What they care about is their way. And for those of us who are a little older, we've seen this happen many times. This is how Democrats like to, and I'm going to put this in quotes, negotiate, okay? Their idea of negotiating is, you give us what we want, and then we'll talk about what you want. 
And this is essentially what they said. You fund the government and then we'll talk about what you want. Well, in reality, what happens is what the Republicans want never gets talked about. And Trump knows this, and that's why he went into that meeting with Nancy Pelosi the other day, and he asked her, he said, if we give you all this, will you then fund the wall? Nope. And he said, well, then I guess we're done, and got up and left, because he understands this. This is how the Democrats work. You do things our way, and then maybe we'll talk about yours. Well, we really won't, but we'll tell you that we're going to talk about what you want. That's how it's been working for decades. I can tell you my entire adult life, that's how it's been. I watched it happen over and over and over on many important topics. The Democrats would say, but if you just give us this, then we'll talk about it. And then they never, ever did. And that's the tactic they're trying to use right now. And Trump's calling their bluff. He's saying, nope, not going to happen. And that's why this shutdown is so very important. Now, what's really disturbing, I don't recall whether this was on the Kilmeade radio show this morning or on Rush Limbaugh, one of the two. They said they hate to say it, but the Democrats are waiting for something bad to happen so they can say, see, you should not have shut down the government because if you wouldn't have shut down the government, this wouldn't have happened. And from what I know about the deep state, all it would take is for their false flag to succeed and to hurt some people. And then we have a real situation here. But I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not saying something will. It's just the timing with the Super Bowl and everything. That would be such a high profile event that if something would happen there, that could be used by the Democrats as leverage against Trump and as a way of demonizing him for what's going on. So I don't know. Let's just be careful. Let's be cautious because they're planning something. I don't know what it is, but there will be something that will happen that will be for the purpose of painting Trump in a bad light. Now, whether our people can stop it or not, I hope they can. But this is definitely something we need to be aware of. If you happen to be going to the Super Bowl, make sure that you keep your eyes peeled because lots of stuff going to be going on there and we need to make sure that everybody's safe. So see something, say something, okay? And that's what I've got for you tonight. I just needed to get this out there and to let you know what I was talking about. I don't think you should be focusing on the riffing right now but because that's not going to help our cause. Trump needs to show that he cares about the American people and firing 800,000 people is definitely not going to prove that. So put that out of your mind for right now. It'll come later. Right now, this has to be the focus. And make no mistake, this whole thing is to dethrone the little dictator, Nancy Pelosi. So I want to thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you all later. Mm -hmm.